Hello and welcome to this tutorial on a Warhammer inspired environment made with UE5 and Imperius creator tools. My name's Charlie Adams and I'm the director of 3D at Imperia. With me today is Thomas Javelis, who is a 3D artist at Imperia. So Tom, do you want to explain a bit about this scene before we get into the tutorial? Hello everyone. So with the recent release of uh, latest Warhammer game, we wanted to show how to create a similar sci-fi environment within the Unreal uh, using our Imperia Creator tools. Thanks for that, Tom. And with that being said, I think let's get straight into the cinematics. In the first part of this tutorial, we'll be introducing the lighting preset blueprint. It's a really handy preset of different lighting scenarios that have been handcrafted by our artists. So Tom, can you explain a bit why you added this blueprint first? So yeah, as Charlie mentioned, applying lighting blueprints is very easy and you can achieve very good results within seconds. I selected foggy morning preset as it can be easily adopted to mood of our scene. Thanks for that, Tom, and I think we'll visit this lighting system a bit later on in the video. So now we're moving on to the blockout stage of the scene. So a blockout's really important as it allows the user to essentially create the composition at a very simple scale. So, Tom, would you like to explain a bit about your thought process while you were blocking out this scene? So I think there is two main things why I'm doing block out. First of all, uh, we're doing, we're modeling the scene. Uh, later we will swap them to swap all the cubes to high poly meshes. And also uh, the other thing that is very important is lighting. So if we want to have mountains or we're in the valley, we need to be cautious of the light direction uh, of all the components that will complete the scene and that if we want we want to be sure that nothing gets in the way uh, to complete our project cool no i think it's a really interesting approach that you're thinking about the lighting as well as yeah it's really you know annoying like once you've added an asset and there's a big shadow across where you're trying to record or things like that it can be really annoying so i think that's a, a great point to bring up yeah, because even landscape could be a very big obstacle uh, if we want to achieve good lighting and even slight uh, hills, small hills could be a very big uh, obstacle. So now the blockout's done, so we're starting to swap the assets for modular assets we've built previously. So the reason we enjoy using modular assets is once we basically created one section, we can create multiple varying sections with the same assets just by varying the decals, varying the textures and basically scaling and repositioning in different areas. So Tom, do you want to explain a bit about what you're doing here in the footage now? So yeah, uh... These assets that I'm scattering in the scene, they're, they were modeled by me, but they're not super high poly. They're just placeholders. And later you will see that uh, we are uh, replacing them with very good uh, high poly models. As you can see, the bridge is already there. And as we all know, all 3D artists knows that uh, gathering assets for the scene is very important and it's basically taking a lot of time uh, but for this scene most of the assets were free uh, from the sketch fab from uh, bridge so yeah that was very big help i think it's really interesting you said about gathering the assets before you actually start the scene so i think it's quite similar to how an artist would gather up a mood board right of images you're essentially doing the exact same thing but with 3d models so you can kind of get an aspect of what you're going to create before you've even opened up the scene essentially 
Yeah, and just touching upon Quixel Bridge and Sketchfab, I think they're both really powerful tools to get photorealistic assets at your fingertips. So you can essentially create any kind of scene completely for free. So as you can see, I'm placing uh, large scale assets behind our main area. The main focus point will be uh, in front of this uh, landing pad, uh, you can name it like that. And yeah, uh, and next on we'll be moving on, on creating all the surrounding environment, uh, cliffs and rocks. So in the previous clips, we were blocking out the scene using high poly assets for all of the industrial areas of the scene. In this part of the scene, we're going to be replacing all of the spheres from the block out with the cliff generator. So Tom, do you want to explain a bit of the benefits about, of the cliff generator? Yes, Chad. So as we all know, who are working in, with Unreal, uh, PCG is a very powerful tool uh, that is very new and we're trying to use it every way possible. So yeah, as Tom mentioned, the cliff generator is an extremely powerful system and it's actually really simple to use. So you essentially draw a spline of where you want your cliffs to form and then you have a bunch of parameters to basically adjust that system in any way you can imagine. So this system doesn't necessarily have to be used for cliffs either. You could put abandoned buildings on this spline and the procedural meshes scattered on it would also work. So you could have those buildings with ivy, uh, rubble on top, all of the good stuff uh, straight from the system. And the handy thing about it as well is once you've created one, you can simply duplicate it and have a completely new seed to give your scene a new look and feel to it, but still maintaining the quality of the system you've created. So by default, Clip Generator spawns uh, vines and grass on the rocks, but you can swap them to anything you want and no matter how big the mesh or assets you want to scatter on the cliffs so basically behind the scenes what we did is we swapped uh, to high poly trees and bushes so as we previously mentioned the cliff generator isn't just for cliffs it can also create ridge lines shorelines and in this case that's exactly what we're going to be using it for so rather than hand placing assets manually, we're just going to be drawing our spline over the shoreline here. And it just saves us a lot of time when we're creating assets. And if we're not happy with the look and feel, we can simply change the seed or move the spline. And as well as that, you know, we can scale these assets up, we can scale them down, and we can also change the rotation to give it a more varied look and feel to it. So the next PCG system we're using is Scatter on Mesh. It's one of our more simple systems, but it's also one of the most powerful. As like I was saying previously with all of our systems, once you've created one variation, you basically have infinite variations. So the different seeds can basically scatter all of the meshes in completely new locations, and it gives it that unique look and feel. So as you can see, Tom's been placing these around the scene to basically remove parts of this generic landscape and add a lot more fidelity to the scene. So as you can see on the screen now, we have mesh sets and that's essentially where you change the meshes you want to scatter on the systems. All of our systems do use these mesh sets and these can easily be changed just at the drag of an asset. The next system we're using is the biome generator. So it's essentially a spline based system where you draw an area you want your system to spawn in and then you can swap out the assets and it will spawn them in the designated area. So Tom, why did you find the system handy to use for this scene? So basically we have this big opening in front of a focus point of the scene and we need to fill it in by hand it we could we could do that by hand or we could use a foliage tool but with that you 
are not getting that randomness and, and I don't know, natural feeling. So basically what PCG allows uh, us is to create biome, uh, create some kind of uh, setup that we want to have all around the space. And after that, I just, uh, I just spline and the environment is filled with various of assets that they're scattered very randomly. And yeah, and by hand, it would take way longer. So with this particular scene, the effects and sound effects are really important. So we've created this file system that can also be found in the link below for the tutorial. And it essentially spawns fire and smoke on 3D assets based on their location. So these kind of systems are really handy for bringing a bit of life to the scene. And maybe Tom can also explain a bit about the other systems and the importance behind them. So yes, uh, for this scene is very important to have some kind of detail, uh, not only in texture or in geometry surrounding us, uh, but also in sky and uh, to make scene more alive. So fire is the tool that gives us uh, some kind of action feeling. The birds, of course, adds uh, fauna in the environment. Uh, the fog uh, gives us a bit of a mood setting. So as you can see, we're using uh, Niagara Fire. That uh, the system was created actually by Charlie, but yeah, as he mentioned, uh, he created it by tutorial. Thanks for that, Tom. And we're just going to start by scattering a few more of these systems around to really start bringing the scene to life now. And for the foreground, I'm using starter content built in particle systems. So at this point, I'm coming back to our lighting blueprint and I will adjust the sky color uh, to match the clouds and the mode that we want to achieve uh, within the space. If you are interested in learning more about our lighting presets as well, you can find a designated YouTube video on our channel. And we're also actively developing this to make it even more advanced. Yeah, so as we mentioned previously, we created a modular sci-fi asset pack for this. So we're just beginning to swap out our old block out pieces for the foreground of the scene. So as this is gonna be where our cinematics are taking place, we want this area to be full of details and you know really bring the scene to life. So as well as this, we also noticed that our composition was quite low. So we're just raising up all the platforms now so we can get a really dramatic angle later on when we record the video. So yeah, as we're basically swapping out all the models now, we also want to be adding materials. We want to be adding extra additional props to the scene and as well as that decals. So I'll hand it over to Tom to go over the power of decals and why they're so handy to use inside of Unreal. So yes, as we can see, I'm using loads of decals in this space. The reason is materials are great, uh, but we don't have power to paint or add those extra details that we see every day around us. Like for example, the mud, the crosswalk lines, uh, I don't know, splashes of uh, blood or, or, or oil. So I'm adding that to give us in some kind of feeling of history, uh, motion and realistic feeling. 
So after manually placing some assets behind the scenes, we've done a few lighting corrections. We've also added, added in some animated characters. And if you are interested about seeing more about animations of characters in particular, we can do a follow up video if there's a demand for it. But essentially we followed a bunch of tutorials and this was the first time we've actually done uh, character animations ourselves. So it was a bit different for us. So we managed to animate and import these animations in a matter of hours using completely free tools available on the market such as Mixamo and the characters were a paid asset from the web but you know you can get a bunch of free assets from Mixamo or Sketchfab as we mentioned previously which can really help bring your creations to life. So we really hope you enjoyed this type of video. It's a bit different for us, but if you did enjoy it, feel free to leave a like and a comment down below and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you had on this particular project. Thank you and till next time.